Killed a rabbit. Oh, damn. There he went. Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, September 30th, 2024. Let's get into it. So today's video, I was going in, I got some great clips. Uh, I was going to combine geopolitics with prepping, and then I thought, you know what, I ain't got the energy. <laughs> That'd be a long, another long video. My video yesterday was uh, almost an hour long. Ah, we're not going to do that. Uh, so I wanted to make a prepping video and, and, and give you some, some ideas of things that you got to do pr to prepare for what's coming. Um, so uh, in, in, in the clip, uh, let's just do the clip right now. This is me out hiking, and, uh, and I was just giving you advice. Let's watch that now. just wanted to make a talking video, something different. been doing a lot of thinking because, uh, you know, I am a prepper. And, uh, you know, I always uh, try to, you know, the only thing that you can do with your house, if somebody's trying to break in, they're going to get in. The thing is, you got to slow them down enough so that you could get to your weapons, for example. But if you're building a new home, what are the things that you want to think about with that new home? Well, like I said in the, yesterday's video, you want to make sure that uh, you're putting in uh, coastal windows. You don't want to build where it can flood and if you are in a flooded area put it on stilts. Uh, make sure in like in Florida you're building a block house and not a wood house. There's termites everywhere in Florida. Block, they're not going to eat through block. So for example, so look at uh, your construction for example. And then uh, if you're gonna build a house why not put a safe room in there? You know? I mean, if, if you don't want to shoot somebody or have to go through that, you know, it doesn't take very much room to make a safe room. So, you know, the key is to be able to have the time to get to that safe room. And then what are you going to have in that safe room? You got to be able to call out to the police. So, you know, uh, do you want a lead line in case of a nuclear attack? I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's how far do you want to go? Or perhaps, or and, how about a bug out location? Well, what do you have to have at that bug out location? Well, water, probably one of the most important things. What are you gonna do for electricity? Okay, I always like those Elon Musk tiny homes with solar panels and a battery backup. So that takes care of your electrical needs. And the nice thing is you don't have to worry about utilities coming into your little bug out location. You know, and when I said water supply, you know, are you near a river? But then, will that river flood, right? If you're too near it and you get a hurricane that comes through, how, you know, what is the, uh, what's your level above that river? What's the danger that you're going to get flooded? If you are going to get flooded, maybe you need to bring in a huge amount of dirt and just put that tiny home up on the hill, for example, or just by far enough away from the water that it's not too difficult to get there. How about some rain barrels at your house? You know, if the stuff hits the fan, you got to have water. And then how are you going to filter that water? I've always recommend the Kited and Vilt water filter. It's a backpacking filter. It's nice because if you want to go backpacking or you want to just go out for an overnight trip and you don't have enough water, you can just go pump your own. You can pump it out of a mud puddle. And if you have rain barrels, you can hit those rain barrels. You know, how are you going to flush your toilet? if the stuff hits the fan, okay? You're gonna, those rain barrels, that's a nice thing. You can scoop a bucket of water, dump it in that, uh, that bowl and flush it right down, right? How are you gonna bathe yourself, all right? You're gonna have an outdoor shower of some sort? I'll tell you from backpacking, you can go a long time with baby wipes that are soaked in alcohol, isopropyl alcohol. And what you do is after a sweaty day, you know, you wipe down with those baby wipes everywhere on your body. Just wipe it all down. 
I remember after one backpacking trip, I went into the ranger's office and I was asking him uh, a question. This was after my trip. And, uh, and so she was sitting there and she goes, uh, she goes, well, uh, you know, I don't know what to tell you about your trip. I said, no, 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 no. I'm, I just wanted the brochures. You know, I've already done the trip. She just kind of blinked and I was going, why is she so confused? She goes, no, you don't, I don't smell anything. I said, what do you mean? She goes, normally, you know, when people have been out in the forest for eight days, she said, the body odor when they come in here, she said, it's, uh, it's pretty potent. <laughs> and she says, I can't smell you at all. How did you maintain your hygiene? And then I gave her the story about, you know, the baby wipes. Uh, so, you know, and, and, and if that water supply is nearby, maybe you can go swim in that. You know, all you need is a little bar of soap, uh, eco-friendly, and just get in, that, get in there. All right, so that's a kind of enough. You know, the other thing, I keep stressing, you know, if the stuff hits the fan, I want you looking around the house. Like, I just replaced a washing machine. Now, I didn't, I wasn't even thinking about it. I just broke the lid on it. I gave that story in a previous video. But looking back on it now, I should have replaced that washing machine, whether I broke the lid or not. It was seven years old. You got a hot water heater that's 20 years old? You know, how much sediment's sitting down in that thing? You know, if the stuff hits the fan, you're not going to be able to get people to do this type of work. They're not going to be able to come in and replace your hot water heater or, uh, or you know, bring an appliance in. Plus, if the uh, financial crisis hits and we've got hyperinflation, how are you going to buy that washing machine? So I want you to look around and replace anything that you can. Uh, also, get rid of stuff. All right, you got uh, stuff uh, sitting out in the garage that's just been sitting there for 10 years. I want you to go out and look at it. Now, that I tell you what, I have found stuff 10 years old that all of a sudden I'm like, holy moly, I got a use for this thing. I knew I was holding on to it for a reason. <laughs> you know, But I mean, if it don't work, like I had an old chainsaw. I was holding on to that chainsaw. I thought, well, you know what? I can get this chainsaw to work. I took it into the, the hardware store and they wrenched on it and they got it working. And I guess it worked for uh, a couple of couple of cuts and you know, then all of a sudden, bah, 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 bah. I was like, what the hell? They just worked on it. I went back to them and they said, well, sir, we told you that, uh, you know, what we did, that's an old chainsaw. And, uh, you know, we got it running for you, but there was no guarantee it was going to keep working. Get rid of it, man. Buy you a new damn chainsaw. You know, I like those uh, lithium battery chainsaws. Although, once again, how long is that lithium battery going to last? If you're doing a lot, a lot of chainsaw. I just using a chainsaw as an example because that was one that, that, that hit me. You know, I had an old power washer. I bought the wrong damn power washer. I bought a gas powered power washer. You know, I had taken care of that thing. I didn't, you know, if, if you didn't know, when you're done using your power washer, you have to oil it. And then, you know, they've got an advertisement on YouTube now that's supposedly this thing that you can hook up to your hose that replaces all power washers. Thing is, I don't want to buy it. And that gets me on to the next topic, advertising. You know what, and I'm not picking on them, and I don't know, it could be a good product. You know, you ever remember that Shakespeare, I think thou does protesteth too much? Well, I knew something was up with the jab. Remember back in 2000, every other commercial, every politician, everything, the, the vaccine mandates, I mean, everything was telling you to get the jab, even though we knew it was an experimental vaccine. It wasn't even a vaccine. It was a newer technology, mRNA. But, you know, when, when you got somebody beating the hell out of you to do something, do you really want to? Another example would be, and this is probably a good product, I want to try it out, but Relief Factor. Every other commercial I hear on, you know, talking radio goes on about Relief Factor. <laughs> you know, and I don't know, it could be good, but I'm just thinking, you know, if you're spending that much money on advertising, uh, you know, how good is your product? Of course, at the same time, and here's my pillow. All right, my pillow. Spends a lot of money on advertising, but I'm going to tell you what. I bought their sheets, the Giza Dream sheets, and I bought uh, their pillows. I love them. So there you go. There's somebody that advertised a whole lot. So then let's get into finances. By the way, 
not financial advice okay this is just I want you thinking about things somebody's gonna so I never I don't believe in annuities so let's just say that off the bat so I'm biased maybe there are good annuities out there I have no idea but anybody that's promising you a 5 to 20 percent return for the rest of your life there's something fishy going on there and my question to you is at a front company do they really represent now remember you know a lot of people think uh, well, they're State Farm. They'll never go out of business. Or they're, they're AIG. Well, remember AIG almost went out of business. It was only because the government bailed them out back in 2008. So when you buy an annuity, it's usually backed up by hopefully not a front company. If it's a front company, they're going to go out of business and you're going to be left holding the bag. Okay, so the, the, you know, that's, uh, those are the shadiest. The, the second shadiest are the banks. Okay, they sell you annuity. All right, he said, well, the bank can never go out of business. Guess what? Banks do. Look at Signature Bank. All right, there's, there's a lot of banks in precarious positions. Or so, let, let's say the big insurance company goes out of business. Who's going to pay you the annuity at that point once the business is gone? Right? So, I mean, I want you thinking about what you're doing with your money. Right? I've, I've been stressing gold, silver, platinum, palladium, you know me, I, and, uh, and then, of course, eventually, once real estate crashes way down, uh, real estate will be a good place to go. But the problem is, there's so many damn regulations now. You know, I mean, look at what happened to the people that own those rental properties, especially in California. They said, oh, guess what? You can't kick the renter out even if they're not paying you. Well, those landlords, I imagine quite a few of them went bankrupt. If, you, if you've got a property, you, you've got to pay the taxes on it. And you got to pay the, well, the, the insurance. Like I said, I told you, I'm going bare. I'm probably not going to get homeowner's insurance. That's another thing I want you to look at, is all your insurance stuff, right? Do you really need to insure that motorcycle that you ride once a month? Now, I want, I'm not saying don't, obviously. But, I mean, uh, you know, if you've already got, you know, liability, that, you know, that might be all you want to carry. You know, I had, you can always take it in out of storage, but you're still paying for the insurance. Uh, you know, do you need life insurance? There was a story today, 21-year-old. They was they sucked him in. They were promising him all this financial education and everything. And then they said, well, why don't you buy a life insurance policy? You'll never get it cheaper than you can right now. And so he went in and he was reading all of that fine print, which none of us do. And uh, he said, uh, his boss told him, he says, son, you're... You're only 21 years old you got no dependents why the hell do you think you need life insurance <laughs> he says you know plus do you trust these people you know what company is it and if what's who's going to pay up if that company goes out of business for the life insurance and the kid thought about it and he said yeah you're right i don't see why i, I would want life insurance doesn't make any sense so there you go and then if you do buy life insurance and let's say you buy it when you're 50 years old a lot of those term policies only go to 65. Odds are, you know, at this day and time, hopefully, you're going to live past 65. Well, guess what? You paid for 15 years, and now the policy is worthless because they won't pay after age 65. These are all things I want you thinking about. So insurance, do you look around at all the insurance you have. Do you really need it? Every time they give you one of those extended warranties, do you really want it? Now, I'm not going to say that they're not a good deal. I mean, if, you, if you're getting an extended warranty for three years on a $1,000 TV for 50 bucks, do it. What the hell? I have had extended warranties pay off. But if they want $300 for a $1,000 TV for a three-year warranty, that's a waste of money. You buy, buy just buy a new TV. It's, you still got a year-long warranty. Okay, so it makes it only two years. <laughs> then just buy a new TV. All right, so I wanted to add, because I thought about what I said in that, that clip, and I, this is for your, your, home at, your home and home or your bug out home. And uh, a couple of things I wanted to add to that video, because I got, you know, I had to drive home, and I got to thinking about things. So another source for your water supply would be put in a well. Now, one of the things I want to do here in Florida is I want to put in a well. I can actually put a well on my property. I just, I don't have the money. Okay, now when silver hits $100 an ounce, I, 
I might convert that over and I'll put in a well. So then I've got a water supply. Uh, but at your bug out location, you know, that's another thing. The other thing I did not talk about with the bug out location is how do you take care of the sewerage? All right, especially if you got a family. Um, you know, so you're going to have a septic field outside of your Elon Musk tiny house or, you know, those tiny houses, you can put <laughs> multiple modules down. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be a tiny house. It could be a big house if you want it. Uh, that, I, I just like, I like his construction. Uh, I think that the energy efficiency and the durability, they're saying it can survive up to 160 mile an hour winds in those little tiny houses. I think that's fantastic. I tell you what, uh, and then of course, uh, so, so you had to take care of your sewage, your water, and then the, the other thing I thought about was I couldn't survive, well, I mean, obviously if the stuff hits the fan and you're, I mean, it, it depends on the, is it the zombie apocalypse or is it just a financial crisis? You know, are you going to need internet access? I mean, you know, it, it, the crisis can be deep or, I mean, is it a nuclear war? I mean, you know, and you one of the survivors in your bug out house. It's up to you how far you want to go with all this, but I thought about the uh, internet, and uh, there's a new device, they're advertising it, and there's all kinds of options for a portable hotspot that you could do. I mean, so even if you're not connected to fiber or, uh, you know, I guess cable's kind of outdated these days, uh, you could possibly use your cell phone, but if, if the stuff really hit the fan, the cell towers may be down. Uh, but then we got Starlink. Of course, the Russians could take out <laughs> the satellites, and then you wouldn't have Starlink no more. So maybe you won't have any internet at all. But I, what I'm just telling you is that there's all kinds of options for internet, and uh, uh, that's a possibility. Uh, I, one last thing on the uh, "thou saith" uh, or "thou protest" too, uh, too exponentially, or that uh, Shakespearean thing. Uh, right now, we're getting all kinds of advertisements on vote yes on the fourth, uh, four uh, on Amendment Four here in Florida, and that's to grant abortion up until the day the baby dies. And because I'm seeing, because you you have to understand, we're a Republican state. We're somewhat conservative here, um, you know. So who's paying for that? That would be the federal government, and that would be the Democrats. Uh, they got tons and tons of money. They're getting, they're sending billions to Ukraine, and they're kicking it back. And so it goes into the NGOs, the non-governmental organizations. So the fact that they're advertising this, every other freaking commercial tells me it's a bad thing. <laughs> I already told you I was going to vote no on it, but I'm just, I, I want your, I want your shackles up, man. I want you kind of reading the tea leaves and thinking, why are they? so beating on this this for because what it says you know in in the advertisements is your doctor uh, gets to decide whether the baby is aborted well all you gotta need is a charlatan doctor you know like i said you could have a pimple on your ass <laughs> and oh this is a medical condition that we need to abort that baby so it gives the, uh, the uh, charlatan doctor or any doctor or whatever the medical system the ability to abort that baby i, I mean if you're for that that's fine you know, I'm not. I, I, I think uh, 18 weeks, you know, uh, and, and, and even then, I mean, of course, the pill is available. You can abort it early on. I just don't think that a baby that's getting close to being born um, should be aborted. And uh, so that's kind of my opinion. Uh, let's get to the, the next video. Uh, this is me talking about my stupidity. Every time I think that I got my house pretty damn secure. <laughs> I'm mistaken, man. Let's watch that video now as my door could be broken into out right out of my and my garage could be broken into. All right. All right. So let's continue with the uh, prepping discussion. So this is the metal door to my garage. And I thought, okay, how the hell are they going to bust through that to get into the house? Okay, because... And then, of course, if we spin around, we can look at the garage. All right. One of the things that you need to learn about, and I haven't done this, but you can put a tube on that right there. They can come through with a coat hanger, hook onto that, pull that down, and open your garage door. Just wanted to give you some prepping stuff. Now, you can see I haven't done anything because I live in a gated community, and so far, there's no threats, but you better believe I'm going to get into that. So my question 
that I'm going to be answering soon on a video is, okay, you can pop these bolts out of these hinges in two seconds. I mean, they did it within two minutes. Two minutes. And this door just phew, flies right off. So you don't need a battering ram. Imagine, this is a metal door. Can you imagine? I thought, well, hell, it took a hell of a battering ram to get through this door. All right, so let's get to the next prepping item that I want to, to go over with you. All right, so I had this top little washer here, and it was, yeah, my my ex-wife, sometimes she was right about things. She said, you bought a shitty washer, man, and it would vibrate, and it would bounce all over the damn place, and it was crazy, man, and it, you know, and so I, uh, and then, of course, I finally broke the lid, so then I bought this monster, and I just want to talk about this for two seconds. All right, so this has got the ultra fresh vent system. Now I had a front. The reason why I went with the top loader was I had a, a front loader when I lived in Michigan, and man, I'm telling you, the mildew buildup around this thing right here would be horrible, and it would smell, and I would get the mildew reek out of it. Well, this has a ventilation system. See, it's protected by microband. Now this is the Cat Daddy. All right, you can see 10-year limited warranty. The other one had a 10-year limited warranty. They all come with a 10-year limited warranty, and then they don't. And it doesn't cover anything that you, <laughs> I mean, it certainly doesn't cover a broken lid, right? Now, but the beauty of this thing is, is that uh, with this ultra vent fresh system, you can do this ultra fresh vent, so which gets all that moisture out of there. So supposedly, now this thing, God dang, look at this. I'm putting my entire weight on this thing. It's a monster. Plus, I've got now with with since it's not a top loader, I can put stuff up here. I you know I haven't put anything up here. This is just my OxyClean. I keep it in a coffee can. I but I'm just telling you that these are the improvements that I want you to make right now, right now before the stuff hits the fan. Okay, and uh, and you can see the size of this thing. This is the 5.3 cubic uh whatever cubic feet cubic meter i don't i don't know and then of course i got this huge dryer which is which is still good and of course since i'm not married see the colors don't have to match now someday maybe i want to match the dryer uh which i'll get the blue because i like the blue better don't you like the blue better all right and that's enough and then often if you don't have a sink where you can wash stuff in you know, when you're working on your auto stuff and everything else, uh, put one in. Now, this isn't the best one. This this porcelain stains, and I can't get the stains out. Look at it. And my wife, used, my ex-wife used to complain. She goes, it looks terrible. It looks terrible. Who the fuck's going to be in your laundry room, man? <laughs> I mean, come on. You know? But anyway, it, that's it. I just wanted to put that out. All right, so that was that video. So when I come up with a solution for those hinges that will make it a little bit more difficult for somebody to get into my house, I will do that. Uh, we will get into the news and everything. I did want to just express my condolences to uh, North Carolina. Uh, it looks like, man, you guys are drowning up there. Unfortunately, all the Democrats in North Carolina are still going to vote Democrat, <laughs> even, even though you're drowning. Even though your your towns, are, I mean, where's Kamala? She's out in California uh, on a campaign uh, with the elites, uh, getting money for for the Democrats. Do you think the Democrats give a shit that the North Carolina has been obliterated? They certainly don't. Peace out. Stay free.